Hello, welcome to the last parts of the building tool. So right now our building tool is actually fully working, uh, as you saw in previous videos. So the last few parts that I will do here will be mainly covering about roofs. So when we open, of course, your Houdini itself. So here we have our tool. And since we did some, and since the last time we did some things with like session sync, we have to make sure your tool is up to date. So the way you can do that is again by right clicking like probably it's like either locked or unlocked and we're going to make sure it's actually matched the definition so when you click that it will actually lock up your tool and it will look up the last version you have available on your computer which is the one that we made in session sync so to make sure to double check this so here i can see i've made my system with my uh, data tables which of course will not currently work because i don't have data tables here so that's that's how I know everything is up to date. So I'm going to right click, allow editing of contents. And now we can start making our roof system. So as here we have our building tool, we have uh, three outputs. We have the just the geometry. Uh, also make for now, I'm also using the generic layers, which is the building layer from the building tool. So if I would now here place a null node you can see we have geometry we then have the points and then the last one is then sort of like the roof shapes uh, to keep things simple for now we're gonna also now you can see that i have multiple inputs so to keep the things a bit more simple now i'm just gonna make sure we have one box so we can start from a bit basic shape and then see later on if we can do something more interesting so we're gonna start here with that so we can for example say like floor uh, layers or something like that. So these are like for each floor. Now, of course, from these layers, I want to like blast away the actual floors, but I only want the roof layer. So usually we should have like a group for that. So we now have the roof part, so we can see floors or roofs. And from this part, we then want to write our logic. So if we actually have multiple buildings, then we want, of course, to a loop. So we want to write our logic in a loop. So either we can do uh, for each primitive, or if your loop, or if your primitive is a bit more complicated, then we should probably do like a for each uh, connected piece. So either for each primitive or for each connected piece. So for my case, I'm just going to start out with a for each primitive. So plug that in over here, like so. And we're going to probably need some more space in the loop. So right now we are just working on this one single tile, which of course I only had one before, so it's not going to matter that much. And so first thing to do here in our loop is to make sure our, our shape is clean and topology wise. So right now my example is pretty good, like it doesn't have weird topology. Uh, but in case there is some, uh, we're going to use the face node, which will remove points if there would be here on the line multiple points. So if I would now go here, we say remove in nine points, it will actually delete them, but for now, it's not really, really visible since it's already like a decent shape here. Another thing to do is you want to use the poly expand node. And this could potentially also be in a loop, uh, because let's say this, for example, had like multiple pieces or something like that. We want to then for each piece do that. Um, so if you just, for example, now take the poly expand, so poly expand 2D, place it in over here. And you might see really nothing special, but there will be a small border here on the side if you look at the wireframe. Now, this poly expands, we want to change the output from the curves to the surface, and it will create this weird shape. And we're going to basically then boost here the offset, and we can make something a bit higher, like let's say 50. So you can see that this will create a, a large shape, but we are only interested in this part because this is sort of like looking as a roof shape from the top here. So we want to here disable that we don't need the outside, but only want the inside part, which is then basically like a flat shape of my roof. So this will be a nice trick on how you can get a roof shape. You sometimes also want to play around here with uh, this option because uh, the more complicated system, the more complicated shapes you have, the more complicated systems you maybe want to do uh, in this step here. So we also want to then enable here uh, the edge distance. So this will measure how long it took to sort of like create uh, the middle points here. So we can store the value from A to B and then we can use it to actually boost up our middle line here. Next step is to actually fuse the poly expand nodes. 
Uh, so you will see that here I had 11 points after the views, I had 6 points. I can also count them here, I can see that I have 6 points in my viewpoint as well. Now we want to then use that attribute called edge distance, which is stored in the vertex, and we want to promote this to points, because that will be of course easier to work with. So promote attribute. And from that, what we're going to say is we would like to use of course, first our vertex, and now we can see our edge distance, and we're gonna promote it to points. Or if you want something else, you can just quickly change that. Now, with it now being promoted into points, we can now quickly X this into a simple wrangle node. And what we want to say in this wrangle node is, we want to add the edge distance to our position in the height, which is the Y axis. So we want to say to our positions in the height, so in the Y axis, they need to be adding that value which is called here at edge distance so we're just calling the value and counting that up so the edge distance value of these points will of course be zero and then the value on how long it ne needs to travel to get here will then be a certain number which of course we can double check in the spreadsheet over here so in this case it was 4.7 units to actually get to this point and we will boost that up in the height you can actually, as you can see, you can write your own logic here. You can even do a booster. So you can, for example, say multiply by two or something. So you can make it larger like that. So that's up to you if you like want to boost these values or play around with them. You can write some little bit more logic here. After that, I'm going to maybe, first of all, give this a bit name. So here, set a roof uh, heights or something. It's always useful to give these names. Then what I want to do is I want to create a sub network and here I'm going to just say uh, make base roof, for example. So from this shape, we're going to do some basic handling of data. So here we're going to go in and we're going to make a little bit tweaks to the network. So we have a very basic geometry, but it's still missing something to sort of like nicely put this in game, which is mainly sort of like adding UVs and maybe we can do a quick border around the building or something like that. So we can do these things. You can of course add more and more elements to make it actually more interesting and believable. Uh, but for Project Titan, well, it's not necessary to go like too much in depth into creating these roofs since they are not that visible in the scene. So let's start maybe with the first thing to do is let's say I want to have like sort of like a border here on the element of my roof. So the way we can do that is we can just place a group node and with this group node, we can then get the border. So we're going to change this to, for example, border. This is then being an edge group. We're going to disable the base group and we're going to say use edges. And here at the bottom, we can say use the unshared edges and it will automatically get, as you can see, that part. Now to fully then extract that into a single curve, there is a nice node called edge to curve and we're going to use this then to as we say so convert the border to a single curve so this is then actually useful to then do a sweep or do something else uh, there is even an option here to do a thicken you can do some transfer of attributes uh, but what we probably want to do is we want to do our own sweeping and, and maybe a bevel or something so we can make it some a bit more interesting what could be useful is also cleaning this curve up so there might be data here in this case it's not anything special but if there would be anything else let's say the, if there would be normal data for rotation that might conflict with the sweep node so we're going to clean up everything here and then i'm going to do the sweeps this is just to make sure i'm always getting like a, a clean result so the sweep node here by itself we of course need to set a shape like a round square so just like a square and this will add a lot of columns so we're going to set this to the lowest part and then we can just boost this up to like a bigger border uh, we can also do a bevel on that so if you want to do some basic procedural modeling here we can start to do some bevels for example so here we're now basically like beveling every single edge uh, we can change that to for example here exclusions and to say ignore flattened parts which is basically these flattened areas and then we have something like this now so you can play around with this uh, you can even have like very cool patterns if you're going to go here to the uh, options here we can change this to 
adding more divisions first of all so it's nice and round and we want to change the profile for example to a ramp and now we actually have a ramp to as you can see uh, control how that would look like so we can make a very specific style or pattern here with that of course we will add more and more polygons to create that style so for now we can just as i mentioned maybe just keep it basic uh, and simple in geometry so let's see what if we for example were to merge this result now we have like a very thick border so maybe we can reduce the size on that uh, for now we can also color it if you want to if you want to like visualize the difference between that or if you want to store vertex color on these meshes that's also possible so you have like a basic border there so that will just like hide the transition a bit of the walls and the roof now next part is uh, adding uvs so we have our base shape here so maybe let's place a null node so here we have the base shape but we don't if you go to uv view there is no uv'ing of this yet so we need to find a way on doing some nice uh, uv's so there are a few ways on how we can set these uv's and the way i'm going to do that is uh, i'm going to loop over each primitive so here for each uh, primitive of the roof so in this case we only have four i'm then going to do a sort of like either uv flatten or projection so what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to calculate the normal direction so in the normal i want to calculate the point direction of points so we have like these small little points facing where the orientation is and i can use this then to calculate roughly how i should rotate and offset my uh, uv so i will write this small wrangle here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say at the normal this is uh, the y-axis should be zero uh, which is equal to zero i would say so here we the normals a bit bigger so they're now facing in this direction so i want to use this information in basically a uv uh, projector so just going to keep it simple and just use the uv projector and we want to have this area facing the same direction as our normals so if I later then have another geometry part, it will also need to face that same direction. What I can already do here in the UV projection is uh, we can use an expression of centering. So we can either use the centroid function, which will just calculate the center. So we can have to say which geometry, which is a zero itself. Then we have to say the axis or so dx. And then we just copy paste this. And then we paste it to the other one. So this is the y. And this is then the z so we now have pasted this in the middle now the only thing that we need to then take care of is then here the point rotations so i want to here rotate this based on that normal direction so that's how i'm going to use uh, this method here now let's go back here and calculate the angle so we can say at angle so a couple of things that we want to do here is i want to calculate the dot uh, product um, of our normal by a base vector which is zero zero one that's the first step so here we can see that value now what we then want to do is we want to calculate the arc uh, conus value like that so we want to calculate that value which will return a radial version of that so we want to then finally uh, convert that to degrees so we're going to use the function from switching radians to degrees here like so then we should have a value here just to make sure to be safe we are going to normalize this value um, so here normalize especially since I will manually overwrite something I'm just going to like normalize that value again so we have normalized or normal and that will make a difference here in our angle now let's go back here and what we want to do is now we want to directly read uh, from the points what is our angle so i'm going to say zero zero uh, dot angle and we want to then say index zero so that should give us that value and it will now unwrap it like that 
So we have a very basic unwrap system with that. So let's take a look at the loop version and double check our UVs here. So here we have a UV checker pattern and we should see like we have some basic UVs. Uh, we can always do a UV transform afterwards. So UV transform. Uh, we can use this as, for example, like scaling value or something if you want to scale it back. So maybe for now, to like see it better in the viewport, I'm just going to scale it like that. So as you can see, we have our basic, simple unwrap, nothing special, uh, but this is how you could, for example, do it. You can try to do it in other ways, like you can, like I mentioned, can you, for example, use UV flatten, you can directly say, I want to UV flatten this part, uh, but the chances you have to make sure that this is always at the bottom, uh, which will not always happen. So here in this case, for example, since it's a quite basic shape, it, it's sort of like, uh, is, is good with that, but UV, uh, but the text density is not uh, consistent. As you can see, like here we have B, but these big chunks and here we have smaller ones. Uh, but yeah, there are ju just multiple ways of how we can try to do unwrapping and fine tune that. So I used just the basic projecting here. Uh, you could like start to tweak these things and play around with it. Uh, but if you just want to have a basic unwrap, this is usable for us. So that is done now as well. And we're going to here merge our results again. So I'm going to merge my actual roof and then our border here. Uh, also in this week, we probably want to add UVs since I'm actually using, uh, looking at my UVs. I can see that my border in this sweep node, we want to say compute UV and then we should be able here to see UV data as well. So here it's a bit stretched because it doesn't have any geometry to actually do it clean, I would say. So if you want to have a better UV there, you need actually a bit more geometry as well to stretch, to have to, to remove the stretch. So yeah, that's our basic roof part. And this can then, for example, already be my outputs. So here, let's align this a bit better. This will then be my output. We can then include this here further with our results. So we're just going to use a merge node and merge these together like so. And we should now have the building. So if I would now here, maybe just grab another box on the side to show it off. If we now have here another box, it will just immediately also make the roof with that. So it should uh, nicely, like, as you can see, create a roof shape and will nicely glide in there. Even if I now take the cube, we should be able to just, for example, do something like that. It should try, it should hold up pretty well in most cases. Um, but I will do a second part where I talk a bit about how we can do things a bit more interesting. So what we now have is a very basic roof, but now I also want to have a roof that sort of like comes a bit more forward and has an interesting piece here. Um, so we'll create another system for that. So that was it for this video. We mainly talked about making a basic roof system, sort of like creating the base setup for that. Next video, I'm going to add some more improvements here and there to have a bit more other variations. So thank you for watching.